Okay. Okay, so it's Friday. We're going to do another kid video. Milana <laughs> is here and she's going to talk about a couple of species of python because one of her snakes in the collection is a ball python. And I went home and changed my shirt so that when Mrs. Hurt and her kids watch, she can see the shirt that she made for me since she already made a comment that my Golden Girl shirt got worn twice before her shirt got worn. So she made us all t-shirts for some of the group of friends that do kickboxing before we all got put into lockdown. And then she modified my t-shirt to be a coal black exotic shirt. So thank you, Sarah. I wore your shirt. I didn't re-wear my Golden Girl shirt. So if you have your question. All right. Okay, so what are we holding? This is Miguel. He is a mm -hmm. banana Mojave ball python. He is wonderful. He's my snake. I got him for, from NARBC so, last March. Yep. Last what March. is, why do you call him a banana Mojave? Because the coloring is the banana and also a little bit of the coloring is the Mojave. But the pattern is what's really with the Mojave in this one. Okay. Oh, where are you going? So why is Mojave a thing? What does that do? Uh, if we had two Mojaves and bred them together. You'd get like half Mojave ball pythons, 25% uh, normal oh. ball pythons. And then if you had four ball pythons, that'd be two Mojaves, one normal ball. Uh, ball python and a uh, blue eye leucistic ball python which is a completely white snake with blue eyes which is kind of cool. So ball pythons are a really common pet because they come in tons of different color morphs and this particular snake has two different morphs in it so the banana morph is just a color change and it makes the snake very bright yellow and brings out a lot of the uh, more subtle colors. Your typical ball python is just black brown and white and then Mojave is another morph that if you put two Mojaves together makes the all white snake with the blue eyes so it takes out all the pattern and color. But if you only have one, then it's considered heterozygous. So if you hear people say het for things when they talk about morphs, especially with ball pythons, that means you need more than one snake to make the final color. So Mojaves are het or heterozygous for that all white snake with the blue eyes, right? So where are ball pythons from? Uh, the middle to the eastern part of Africa. Okay, and are they fast or slow? Are they pretty chill or are they're they? Pretty chill, they just, well, he's really warm. But typically they just kind of like sit. He's much better. They kind of just like sit and fall on that. Cool. Okay. A little bit fluffy. So, why do these little black spots drive Erica nuts? Uh, they look like mites a little bit, Yep. but they aren't. So if you can see, this snake has black dots coming through in the light colored pattern. And that is typically considered paradoxing for things like albino and, and different things like that, to where some of that dark pattern is coming back through, even though the snake should be yellow and very light colored. Um, it drives a lot of veterinarians and vet techs nuts because that snake looks like it has mites, which is a pest that's sort of like fleas for cats and dogs, but for snakes. They're really hard to get rid of. They're a super big pain for people, so it makes people really nervous when they see speckly snakes. Um, our vet tech in particular, she hates snakes that have speckling on them because if you just looked at a blank picture of that snake, and it wasn't moving and you didn't know about the morph, it would look like it has something bad. He doesn't, he's just speckly. Um, one of the boas that we saw a couple of days ago, I think it might've been last week, the Hog Island boa, which is really speckled. Uh, Erica will watch this video eventually. She hates that snake because it looks like it is just covered in mites, but the snake is naturally very speckled. So does he eat weird stuff or is he a plain old frozen thawed mouse eater uh he is a mouse eater well he specifically eats frozen thawed and is a mouse eater but some most uh captive ball pythons really like mice which can be a pain in the butt because so, it's horrible sounding yep 
when ball pythons were first introduced into the hobby, they were always considered problem feeders. A lot of people bred African soft fur rats. They tried to do live food. There were a lot of difficulties in feeding them, mostly because a lot of them were still fresh imports and only a few generations were moved into captive breeding. So sometimes people had a lot of problems switching them over to frozen thawed food. Um, this far down the tree with as much captive breeding as we've done with ball pythons, the vast majority of them do take frozen thawed very easily. Our guy takes it right off the tongs. He doesn't care. Cool. Last question. What are they called where they're na native to? Oh yeah. So if any of our friends from the UK watch and they get really annoyed for the whole way we've referred to this snake this entire video so far, do you know what they're called outside of the US? Uh -huh. Do you remember? They're called Royal Pythons. Their actual scientific name is Python Regius. So if any of the guys from Reptile and Chill podcast watch this video, we call them ball pythons because we're not in the UK. I know you're going to get mad. And they're called Royal Pythons. That's the official term for them and appropriately named. Um, and for anybody else who's watching, if you're looking for more reptile content and cool things, definitely check out that podcast for Reptile and Chill. They're awesome. It's three dudes from the UK talking about a bunch of reptile nerd stuff, and they're also very big into mental health charities. It's a really cool group. Nothing she's shedding so she looks like kind of a khaki dirt ball so what is this this is our short tailed python which is actually what it's called but it is a short tailed python Just so look at its itty bitty tail very similar to the ball python all right i'll do good if you hold tail okay. all right is this a terrestrial or arboreal this snake this is a fat terrestrial snake fat terrestrial <laughs> snake and where are they from uh, in right. So just like the ball python, this is a terrestrial snake. Short, very thick, very strong. This is a very powerful animal. And they are short-tailed, just like the ball pythons are, and just like their name implies. So only from my fingers back is the tail. We've talked about this before. Where the snake loses that rib structure to support it is what is actually the tail. And if you guys can kind of see on the table there, her body structure really tapers off. She's a big old thick snake right up to the start of that tail where she loses that rib support and then just a little bitty tail. But that rib support is what holds all that musculature to make her so strong. These guys are heavy ambush predators. So they'll sit for a very long time and then they just smash the first thing that comes by. So that strike and that body behind it need to be really powerful. They're not as commonly kept. There are a couple of different morphs you can get for short tail pythons. Um, they are becoming more popular because morphs tend to make things popular in our industry. So it gets funny colors or a different pattern and things like that. And that gets people's attention. But they're a lot of fun. They're really cool, very strong. Very cool to have sit and feel as it moves across your lap. Um, most snakes, as you're holding them, don't feel strong. They just kind of use us as a jungle gym and push and pull and move a little bit. It's really neat to be able to sit and hold something that you can feel the strength as that animal holds onto you and pushes and moves. So why is this one so big? Is it a male or a female? Oh, this is a female. That's right. why it's so thick. Yep. Females are much larger. Good? I'm good. <laughs> Anything else about pythons? Why do you like ball pythons? Um, they're... All of the morph colors are really cool. Oh, that fell. All of the morph colors are really cool, and they're also, like, really chill. You can just, like, sit there for hours and just... Hold them because they sit in the ball? Yes. And he's done it before, but he'd like go around my wrist in the old one that we used to have. I could walk around with it around my waist, and it's wonderful. 
Yep. So they are really common pets. Um, it's sort of become a thing in the reptile hobby to give ball pythons a hard time and ball python keepers. Um, they are kind of an entry level animal, um, but they're great for it. They come in a million different colors. They're a really cool pet. Um, just bear in mind that there are tons of other terrestrial short stubby pythons for you to choose from. You just gotta do a little more research and pick and choose, but you can find them out there. So if you guys have any more Python questions, just let us know and we'll make another video come Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.